So many asteroids pass through our solar system and we don't even know about it. Those are rocky pieces of material left over from the time when our solar system was forming, about 4.6 billion years ago. They move around the sun, but not in the way planets do. We're talking about true rebels that prefer to follow some pretty strange paths. Plus, they spin in different ways as they travel between planets and other space objects. And the majority of them come from the main asteroid belt that's located between Jupiter and Mars. Most stay there. But Jupiter has quite a strong gravity, so it can push some of those flying rocks in different directions, and towards us too. They're sometimes round, and sometimes they have odd shapes, with pits and holes from all that crashing into other space rocks. As we currently know, there are more than a million of them in the main asteroid belt. And that's all good until some of them move in our direction. NASA keeps an eye on them, so we know everything's fine, at least for now. But that wasn't always the case with our beloved home planet. If Earth could talk, it would probably share so many crazy asteroid stories. We're talking about those space rocks that left impact craters we call domes. They have a specific shape with a raised center, similar to when you throw a pebble in a pond and see some water splashing upward but we'll never be able to learn about many others. I know this raised center sounds like something you're supposed to see right away, especially if an asteroid that once slammed into the surface was big. But we're talking about millions and millions of years of erosion, so wind, water, and even gravity do what they do best and erase traces. They wear down impact domes, and some sites even end up hidden under layers of rock and dirt or they disappear forever because Earth's tectonic plates keep moving around. Check out the Moon. It's experienced many collisions too. But over there, there's no ocean or tectonic plates moving around, or even wind to slowly, through millions of years, erase craters from its face. Basically, its entire history is written on its surface. But Earth has its own forces that can erase such places as the Veta Fort impact structure and the Chicxulub crater. You know, the famous one that wiped out the dinosaurs? Luckily, scientists have new methods to find ancient craters. They often focus on the mess impacts made, which means the materials they threw around. And the Australian continent is especially interesting, since we're talking about a playground for asteroid hits. By that, I mean ancient supercontinent Gondwana that dominated the South hundreds of millions of years ago. Experts know about 38 impacts, plus they speculate about 43 more. Some structures are relatively small, while others are big and completely hidden. And recently, a scientist named Tony Yates has discovered strange underground magnetic patterns in New South Wales, Australia. Yay! New clues of a giant asteroid impact! And when I say giant, I really mean it. It's a structure 323 miles in diameter. This might be the largest impact site ever found. This spot is called the Deniliquin structure. Its magnetic patterns show characteristic ripples around the center, like when a rock hits the water. There are also fractures that go outward from the center. And it seems rocks from inside Earth ended up pushed into these fractures. That's a typical story for big asteroid impacts. This structure was probably located in eastern Gondwana hundreds of millions of years ago, way before it split into several continents, including Australia. At the moment, all we know about this crater is what we see on the surface. To find more information about this collision and get some proof, we'll have to drill into the ground. An asteroid this big is definitely not a joke. It could have caused a massive ice age and maybe even wiped out around 85% of species even more than the asteroid that ended dinosaurs. In 4.5 billion years, which is how long our planet has existed, it's been punched by hundreds of big asteroids. But that doesn't mean every space rock that enters our atmosphere really makes it all the way to the ground. Most of those that manage to pass the atmosphere are relatively small, for instance, three feet across. That's good for us because any space rock that's less than 82 feet in diameter most likely won't make it past our planet's atmosphere. Since these space rocks come towards us very fast, they heat up the gases in the atmosphere, which burns them away. By the way, 
Once cosmic intruders enter our atmosphere, they turn into meteors. And in most cases, they don't cause much damage, if any, as they fall down. But we used to have way larger things flying around and crashing into Earth. At least 190 of them have left scars you can still see today. One of the really, really big ones is in South Africa. It's 99 miles wide. It's actually the largest. At least that's what scientists think at the moment because they still need to check as many details as possible about this new crater in Australia. This one in South Africa formed about 2 billion years ago, and an asteroid that created it was probably larger than the one that had wiped dinosaurs away. And when an asteroid is bigger than 0.6 miles, it can have really big effects across the world. This impact was so strong that it could have caused fires everywhere and thrown lots of dust into the air. And when you have so much dust in the atmosphere, the climate on the planet can change for months or even years. Then we also have the most popular asteroid that made a giant hole we today call the Chicxulub Crater. You know the story, it crashed into our planet 66 million years ago when dinosaurs were wandering around, catching food, falling in love, basically just doing their thing. The crash itself didn't erase them right away. It threw a lot of debris into space, and when it fell back to Earth, fires and flames were everywhere. The hit also produced a big cloud of dust that covered the planet for years. This cloud blocked the sunlight, which harmed plants and entire food chains. Even those dinosaurs that survived the crash and such difficult conditions had a hard time finding food, so they didn't make it. At least they left us many fossils and turned into the inspiration for movies and stories. A long time ago in Canada, something big crashed into our planet and left a big hole we today know as the Sudbury Basin. People used to think it was an asteroid, but now some experts think it might have been a giant comet made up of a mix of ice and rocks. The hole is almost gone now because of weather conditions though. But people still get to mine iron and nickel there, and at the same time find the leftovers of whatever space object fell there. If you move deep in southern India, you'll find a big hole called Loner Crater. Locals stumbled upon it 200 years ago and believed it might be from a volcano. But now we know it's a trace from a meteor that crashed into the ground about 35 to 50,000 years ago. What's so special about this crater is that it's the only one known to have formed in a type of rock called basalt. Around the crater, there are hills covered in trees, and animals like peafowls and gazelles live there. Birds also like to visit the lake near the crater during the winter. And the lake itself is quite interesting too. It can turn pink because of all those tiny organisms that live there. But this color change doesn't last long. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.